question is, will Kawai Rice be able to uh, come back from that? We're going to find out very, very shortly, folks. We're going to be going into the next game momentarily. But what does Kawai Rice actually have to do? Let's just say that Symbol plays that exact same style again. What would you say to Kawai Rice if you happen to be his coach right now? What would you tell him to do? Well, from what I can see, it looks like Zelnaga Fortress is the next map that he's going to be playing on. So this is a map that I probably encourage that more aggressive style out from him. Because it is a smaller map. Natural to natural on this map is actually a very, very short walking distance. So go ahead, do those gimmicky drops, but not on a big map like Daybreak. No, that doesn't work out so well for you. All right, folks, I think we're about ready to go into game two. Are you ready to go, Apollo? Yeah, man, let's do this. Yes, let us indeed do this, and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to bring you the Iron Squid qualifier number one, and Lights Kawai Rice. He is in the yellow trunks, and he is playing Terran to the northwest of this, the Zelnaga Fortress, versus his opponent, it is TSL Symbol. He is in the green trunks, and he is playing Zerg to the southwest. Yeah, this map's a lot more, a lot more Terran favored for sure. I mean, it, look at how does Zerg try to take a third base here, for example. I mean, they can take the one in the center of the map, go ahead and do that. But at the same time, Terran is so close towards that third base. Yeah, and you don't want to if you try to, that. Yeah, exactly. And if you try to take the back right one, then all of a sudden, it's obviously a, a much more harder to deal with drops in your main base and on the third base so i'd expect to see a lot more of an aggressive kara rice here and i think the uh, the zel nogatar in the center of this map is well it has an expiry date like the cheese in my fridge at the moment actually thinking about that uh, and it is coming down and i'm not sure what the time it actually does deplete I, it doesn't really say it just has this well i guess it has 325 seconds remaining yeah, that's it is actually locked down. Yeah, I suppose it is. That's that's kind of a weird little mechanic, isn't it? So yeah, I'm not sure if I like it though. I mean, it's I don't know. I don't I don't really have an opinion on this Sun Logger Tower in the middle. I mean, it's okay, but I wouldn't be happy if it went away, and I wouldn't be happy if it was kind of kept either, to be honest. You're just an unhappy person. You're basically a bad. Yeah, I'm just a sad. Or I guess I could just you know flip that coin and be like, I'm ecstatic that this is here, and I'd be even happier if it wasn't. <laughs> there you go. Isn't it wonderful? My God, I, uh, this is the best day of my life, Apollo. Thank you very much. All right, well, Kawai Rice. Let's see if he decides to get aggressive. And I gotta say, Kawai Rice's control was pretty good. And when when he got pushed back over the map. It was kind of a case of, you're going to die, mate. You are going to yeah. die. But he did control it as well as I would have expected from him. So I have a feeling that an aggressive push, if he's able to catch his opponent on the wrong foot, then he could get away with that, with that kind of control. Oh, absolutely. Like Two base pushes are incredibly strong here as well, simply because the distances what are the actually hell was really that? short. That was my mic hitting my glass. Okay, or I was going to say which way you want to look at it. Are, are you banging on your flagard or whatever? What? What is it? <laughs> you have Swedish tankards over there, Viking horn. Is that how it's going? Uh, it's like a naughty hat. I'm just like nodding in agreement that Terran could do a two base push. And the, the distances between bases are so short, and it's like a hop, skip, and jump towards the natural area. And that gives, especially because there's there's no like outer area for overlords to be in, so the push is actually hard to scout. Um, so that may be something we'll see here, but so far symbol, hatchery first, then extractor actually, then spawn in pool, or spawn in pool, then extractor, sorry, uh, and then we'll be looking obviously to get speed in, and basically play the same, and it's all down a high, especially when you lose the first game for Kara Rice, it's up to him to change this game for sure. Yes, it is indeed. Three, six Zerglings, in fact, coming out. I actually did a little bit of division in my head there. I was very, very impressed. Like, oh, it's three Zergling spawns, which is actually six. I am so good at basic mathematics, ladies and gentlemen. And that's Kawai Rice's SCV being uh, driven back across the map. I have never seen this Zelnaga Tower do what it does. That's that's a new thing for me. Uh, Zelnaga Fortress is a map that I think I've seen maybe once in a tournament. Yeah, it's it's not used. I mean, it was used in IPL3, actually, but it's so Terran favored that it instantly got shot out. Uh, I mean, Stefano actually lost on here uh, versus Alive in IPL3, and it was so incredibly one-sided. And it, that's kind of the trend of this map, for sure. And maybe this is what we, we have something to see. Oh, actually, oh my god, there's a Roach Warren down. And it looks like we are going to be a very early aggression from Symbol, 
without speed, which is interesting. So just roaches this early on. Definitely an interesting build here. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's not a massive jog across the other side of this map, really. The distance isn't exactly huge. So it is a possibility, certainly. And once that Zelnaga Tower expires, then seeing those coming is going to be a bit tricky. Oh, absolutely. And it looks like it's time just for that when that Zelnaga Tower expires. And pulling all the drones away, try not to take any losses. Um, and the links without speed though, it's literally going to be seven roaches and that's it. There's not going to be any scary follow-up, so this isn't as scary as it would have been with speed, of course, because slow links are useless in uh -huh. this scenario, absolutely useless. So as soon as the Kaurai sees this, it shouldn't be too much too difficult. He's, he's already got a tech lab on the barracks. He can build a Marauder and be like, oh, happy day. Oh, and then happy just kind of day. Defending. Yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? That's but is he going to see it in time? Oh, now well, he does, He's though. definitely going to see it now, that's for sure. Yeah, the yeah. Seven Roach is now rolling out, and two... Uh, what have we got? Two Barracks coming down here, and the Marauder's immediately on the way here for Kawai Rice, and this is a very curious decision here by Symbol. I mean, does he think that Kawai Rice is just going to forget that those things exist? Yeah, I mean, basically all that Kawai Rice has to do is wait till Stim finishes and then go down with Stim, and he's absolutely fine, and... To be honest, that if you look at the investment that Symbol's thrown into it, that's a lot of units out there. And what is he really doing? You know, Kawai Rice wasn't mining from that natural yet. He'd only just been ready to take it. So, and the bus definitely isn't going to work. So I don't know about this. Well, let's see how good this bus really ends up being. The Marauder is on the field. The Stimpak still 30 seconds away from completion. And there is the bus from Symbol getting through there and accomplishing effectively nothing whatsoever. Oh man, he killed like two SCVs for that. Absolutely no, no way was that worth not it. Not good, not good at all. I so, wonder what Symbol's actually playing at here. Perhaps toying with his opponent maybe. It's like, hey, I'm one game up. I might as well try something a little bit gimmicky. And you know what? It didn't work at all. Or it could be because of that Terran, the Terran favorite nature of this map. As you said, he doesn't want to go into the long game here. Ooh, really nice queen block onto the ramp though, preventing yeah, very much Italians so. from doing anything. And they get a few kills, but I mean that's kind of insult to injury to, to be honest, since he's already ahead, so it's not too much, but he definitely has to start mining from that natural now. I mean look at his main base saturation. Whoa, it's a lot of guys working there. Some guys working overtime when they should not be. Indeed, that is actually against health and safety and work laws, which, quite frankly, Kawai Rice does not seem to actually respect. I mean, to be honest, you know, the economy here is very, very awkward for the common blue-collar SCV worker. I mean, they're being replaced slowly but surely by robots. I know, it's it's a horrible sight when you see Thorzane play, because that's what happens, and yeah. looks like aliens do go down in the center of the map, and these roaches still doing a little bit, but... Not enough now, to be honest, because, I mean, he's behind this four mules down on 35 SCVs versus 40 drones on a two-base Zerg. We are seeing a different style, though, from Symbol this time. Double Evolution Chamber, and now just the layer begins, a lot later layer. So, I mean, it looks like we're going to be probably seeing Ling and Festa here as he's working very heavily on his ground upgrades. And Macro Hatch thrown down as well, but Kawai Rice automatically in a good position because of that early failed aggression from Symbol. Yeah, he's looking much, much stronger this time around. Has now finally actually taken that Obel Command and has a healthy count of SCVs to move down to the bottom base as a result of that oversaturation. He may be in a bit of an awkward spot because Terrans have this tendency of mining too much, they're too greedily and too deeply, and then the Balrog comes out and eats everyone, but they have to get a third base a little quicker because they can't mine from their main anymore. It's all mined out due to mules and oversaturation, but mm. he should be okay for the moment, and honestly, uh, getting a planetary fortress on this map and taking the third, that's not really an awkward spot to be in. In fact, potentially, it's a tactical, tactically advantageous spot, especially if you put a sensor tower down. It's like, hey, I don't have a Zelnaga watchtower. I don't care. I've got a planetary Fortress and a sensor tower on my third. Why should I give a damn? Yeah, I'm gonna build my own Zelmaga tower. Yeah, basically. with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> That's basically what the sensor tower is. I wish I had a sensor tower. Um, meanwhile, a lot of links are in production right now, but that's kind of normal. But still on two bases, and this push is very dangerous, especially because he doesn't know what that what's there. If he knew what was there, it would make a lot, lot more sense. Because once again, he could just u lose to Mutilus. But luckily, it's in his favor this time, as that is not what's happening from Symbol. Just a lot of lings, uh, a lot of upgrades, and there is that infestation pit still on two bases, which is incredible. He, I don't even know how he has the gas to build infestors. I'm not even sure he does. With double evolution chamber? He ch doesn't, really. I mean, his gas count's currently at about 600. That's not a lot of infestors to throw in there. He can keep saving up at this point, but... 
He's just started plus two melee attack as well, which is another, what, 150 gas at least. So I don't know how many infestors he can really add to this composition. I mean, using a few in a support capacity, absolutely. But the composition he's got here is not good enough against what Kawhi Rice is packing. Yeah, and Kawaras has no idea, man. This guy's panicking. He sees no third base. He's looking around for one. He's like, what the hell is going on right now? He's yeah, building exactly. turrets, expecting mutalisks. He's getting an armory to build a Thor in case of that. He has no idea. And Terran players, man, they're so resilient to actually scan. And as I say that, <laughs> he actually scans to find out. And it's like, oh, okay, infestors. Yeah, he, so, well, it, yeah. The, Terrans get really, really annoyed when they have to scan. It's like, that could have been a mule. They, it's yeah. it's horrible, isn't it? It's like buyer's remorse, but I like to call it Terran remorse. Uh, and it's, it's a it's a big problem for a lot of Terran players. But yeah, Kawaras now knows what he's up against, and he should be feeling a little bit more confident at this point. But he doesn't want to let his opponent just max out and go at it. Yeah, I mean, basically against this building, he's a second factory. He you can see he's building it now in the natural because you need a lot of tanks against Ling uh, Ling Investor for sure. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, he is dropping into the main base. And he's gonna, I don't know how much he's gonna, oh dear god, there's a trap. Indeed there is. You aren't going anywhere, son, I've got to say. And nice fungal growth for second follow-up, and nicely controlled there by Symbol. No problem, he takes the medivac out. And there is a drop towards the third base, but this isn't really doing anything, because no. this Ling's chasing it around. Yeah, he used it to kill an overlord earlier, kill. which I like yeah. that, you know, clearing the overlord spread, considering what was happening last game. Good idea, and he was able to take down one, but now the Lynx have kind of got his number there, and he needs to be a bit careful. But funnily enough, there's actually a drone heading in that direction to establish another base, and the drop is ready for it. Yeah, that would be good uh, for those guys who actually get something done in this game, but Kara Rice is so late on expanding. I mean, his main base is virtually mined out, and as you said, you know, it mines so fast when you mule in all the time oh, yes. that you know, it's, it's actually a very late third base here. And once again, though, uh, symbols getting ready to go in. This is probably not the best idea. I've got to go with no at this point. Definitely not. We've got upgraded marines backed up by tanks. I mean, the upgrade count for symbol is ridiculous, but the problem is he can't get into good position to get a good surround there and actually do any damage. And he lost a ton of lings there for no real reason. And obviously that's easily replaceable. But Kawai Rice's supply is thunderous at the moment. 161 versus 118. It, this is yeah. 15 minute mark. Symbols at 118 supply. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Kararais tries to drop the third base again, but Ling's immediately in, and it didn't work out at all again. Absolutely not. But um, it will fall down on this well. fourth base over here. It's just outside of its field of view as well. These Lings are like dogs, man. They got the scent for these Marines. And oh, they're yeah. there again, but they might, well, 2-2, two, two, they're probably going to beat this down. Yep, and there's the quick pickup because Kawai Rice tends to agree with your analysis. Adrenal glands on the way up for that as well, and it's going to be an Ultra Cavern, so we're going to have the Ultra Ling style here, which is... Well, I don't know. What do you reckon, to it? Oh, man, he scans right now, and he sees what's going on. He sees the Hive, and he immediately unseizes and goes. So Ultra Ling is great, but the thing is, the Kawai Rice is looking to prevent that, and uh-oh, Borrowed Infestors... Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, unfortunately. Oh, that's a big fungal. It's huge, in fact. That's going to take a while to clean up. You'll need more than ointment to deal with it. There is the scan, and it misses the two infestors as they get away there. Some damage done there, but really, Symbol is playing for time because he doesn't want Kawai Rice to come down on him at this very moment. Yeah, and he's on, you know, three base versus three base. This right base is not functional, and Kawai Rice is moving up right now. His upgrades are 2 1, and plus two armor is quite a way away. Ultras are on the way, but only three because he doesn't have enough gas. He's been stunted for so long on minimal bases. This is why Terran liked this map. And now he's set up in a great location. All Zerg units will be filtered through one direction here. And that's obviously great for Kara Rice. And I'm surprised he hasn't taken a third base. Look at his minerals. He's not even mining gas from that middle base. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, isn't it, honestly? The uh, drop has now finally been cleaned up down there, and it's just a case of staggering tanks forward at this point for Kawai Rice. She's doing extremely effectively. Ultralisks pop up. He knows exactly what he's up against, and you know what? He doesn't give a damn, and I don't really blame him because that ultra count is not high enough to uh, deal with this. The Baneling count is looking nasty, though. Let's see how good this engagement right here is for both. Kawai Rice eats it on the front line right there. Fungal growth nails down that group marines on the right flank but will this be enough to clean it up and it is not quite 
Oh wow, that was so close. It was, that was yeah. just incredibly close. But in terms of like when a fight is that close, it comes down to who has the most money behind it. Yeah. And by the looks of it, that is most definitely Kara Rice. But he still hasn't got a fourth command center, which is a little bit scary here considering his main base is mined out now. Yes, it absolutely is. He's got to think about that very, very rapidly. He's got sensor tower coverage to do that safely. He even, of course, knows where the little lings are hidden and things like that to be able to clean those out. So I don't see why he wouldn't go for that at the moment. Needless to say, he's going to be a little bit paranoid about a, a, a counterattack, really, but... That's going to take a little while to get going. He's going to need more than two Ultralisks, for instance, to go forward here. But the supply count has equalized more so than it certainly was earlier. Kawhi Rice with a second push just to set up a contain here in the center. Yeah, the problem with going Ultralisk, though, is that, you know, the, the common saying is, you know, when you're ahead, go Ultralisk, then lose. Yeah. Um, and that is the scenario right now because, oh, no, this is a horrible fight. Yeah, this is a little bit messy right now, as you can see. The fungal does line on the back there. A couple of banelings do hit in the center. But once again, Symbol losing a ton of units. He gets away with a lot of his infestors. Most of the tanks killed as well. It's a bit of mutually assured destruction between both of them. Yeah, but the thing is, he's losing so much gas infestors and ultralists and banelings compared to just marine marauders. And, you know, that that's not comparable. No, and, it's not. You know, power yeah. rice runs away with it once again and what I was saying with Ultralis is though they're very good when you catch an opponent by surprise but once they know about it you just build Marine Marauders, and Marauders yeah, exactly. and they die and there's absolutely nothing you can do uh, meanwhile Kara Rice is dropping this right hand side now as well and oh god well it's a trap again it is indeed they are ready for that one they even put a, a defensive Ultralisk in place which I don't think Kawara is going to be able to deal with, honestly. And does he see it? Uh, he doesn't. I mean, he's managed to drop in the perfect place there. And in the meantime, Kawai Rice is actually pushing down the center. But that's a very easy cleanup for that drop. No problem at all. Most of it does get away. And Kawai Rice now once again looking to try and secure the center. Yeah, I mean, the best thing for Simul right now would be to tech over into... Oh, my God. He's on siege. This is so big right now if he catches this army. Oh, man. He's looking for it. He's lost to us the creep spread. But that Baneling detonation was massive. The tanks go down and in come the Burrowed Infestors and the Ultralisks now smashing their way across the map. Symbol with a supply lead for now only the second time in this entire game. But Cowboy Rice's production has gone out of control and he's now taking a fourth. Yeah, that's most definitely a strength. There's a lot of weaknesses we've seen today, but dear God, his micro and his splitting is excellent actually. And his production for the money he has is excellent as well. Just imagine if he took some bases faster, he'd be out of control. Um, he really would do an, oh my god, drone sacrifice. I, wait, wait, what? <laughs> they, they were obviously going over to the fourth there. I think that was an ill-conceived notion, I feel, uh, from Symbol. So donating those over to Kawai Rice. And once again, we're going to see a cleanup here from Symbol, but at what cost? Oh man, there's a there's another drop running down the right, but I think that's going to be picked off by these ultras, or it should be. But he is killing a lot of drones in this, and overall there's 25 drones, especially with the ones dying in the middle, being cleaned up here by Kara Rice. But look at the top right and top north side, there's that one burrowed little ling, man, that's been very pestering. Bastards. It really is. That, that, it, I think that's the reason that every Zerg player takes burrow just to infuriate Terran players. Oh, it's so cost-effective. Borrow oh, yeah. is, like, so cheap when you can do that all over the place and borrow bailings and so on, but Kara Rice has to be so careful moving through the map unseized. One more fight like that, losing it, he's out, man, because he does not have the money, and, oh, my God, Lings and Ultras are going to pick off this expansion. Well, it's definitely got to be lifted for sure, and uh, that's not at all good for Kara Rice, but he's also pushing through the center at the same time here. Yeah, I'm looking at the Marauder count. It is at 12, actually, and the upgrade count is really, really scary for Kawai Rice at the moment. He's managed to pretty much equalize, so the plus three armor has now been nullified, and the advantages that Symbol had in that respect have been gone. Kawai Rice pushing forward very aggressively. The uh, main army of Symbol is behind him. The question is, will it get a good engagement here? These tanks are in good positions, and he is prepared for this. Yeah, but does he have enough, though? The army supply is very small, and Ingo Symbol... Symbol once again charging and immediately annihilating the front line of tanks and those marines getting smashed up as well. And the ultra count might just be too high this time around for Kawai Rice to deal with. Oh man, it most definitely is. And when I'm casting Symbol, I feel like it's I'm casting like a like a Lion King StarCraft 2 game. It's like, go Simba, Simba, go! Simba. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, a wimba wap indeed. All right, well, Ultralisks are returning to the mighty jungle where the Banelings sleep tonight. There's 23 coming in. 
Yeah, man, that's a lot. And it looks like symbol, Simba, symbol. I, I'm just <laughs> screwing myself over by saying that because now I'm just I've, I've, every time I say symbol, I'm gonna say Simba. Uh, just, but just go with Simba. Of, Everyone will be okay. But with that. Simba's, Simba's, you know controlling the game better now he's got these bases up and running if he can take another one but where does he expand to everywhere so close to Terran which is obviously why it's so Terran favored here but more Ultralis on the way to accompany the nine already out and that's getting pretty scary to be honest and Kara Rice's army is not that big anymore no it really really isn't it's also very marine heavy which not so ideal against Ultralis needs a lot more marauders in there to do the real damage and in it comes once again, cleaning up a couple of scouting forces very, very easily here. A couple of bailing detonations going off. And what Symbol wants to do here is to menace that fourth base and try and take it down because he knows that his opponent has mined the hell out of his main and natural. Oh man, this is going to be a pretty beastly fight down here. And he's going to go for it. Not the best engagement, but there's just these ultras are so well upgraded. Yeah, they're actually maxed out in every respect. They couldn't get any better if they tried. But unfortunately, he is running into line upon line of tanks. There's a very good control here by Kawai Rise, who has been able to snipe off several Ultras already. There are still, however, five more on the map. The Planetary Fortress comes into play and also picks off those two Burrowed Infestors as well. Not really sure what they were doing, other than a bit of sightseeing. And Kawai Rise holds once again, and Symbol went into a really bad engagement there. Yeah, the thing that's winning for Symbol over and over and over is the use of fungal growth. Um, yeah. It's holding the Marauders in place, so, and it looks like the uh, the Mobius Reactor has just been finished and researched, so I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing Ghosts come out soon, and that actually may seal the deal, to be honest, because as long as he gets rid of the fungal growth, then he's going to be able to, well, the, the, obviously his units won't get held in position. So that's maybe something that the Kara Rice wants to do here, but 25 more bailings once again. The problem right now, though, is this right base is getting very much so exposed to this army of Kyra Rice. Yeah, Kyra Rice can siege up on this and eliminate it immediately, then start to menace the fourth, which would be very, very awkward here. Bear in mind that Symbol has also mined out of his main and natural, and has actually almost mined his third out as well. He, that's been pretty much oversaturated. A massive bailing attack coming in on the third, trying to smash its way through, but this was absolutely grossly inefficient here by Symbol. And I don't feel he can throw that away anymore. I think that actually he's about to give this up. He's only on 84 supply. Kawai Rice with a endurance run here is able to hold. Absolutely. And he's going to unlock this right inside this two o'clock base for himself now. He's going to move down and potentially pick off the entire of these drone line and the hatchery and everything and can take that base of his own. And that actually may be everything. Maybe he doesn't even need ghosts because that was so much gas thrown away for so little that we, that symbol actually has right now. It really, really was. It's like, I'm just going to throw Banelings at the third and see what happens. Well, very little. He killed like two barracks and a couple of tanks and maybe a Marauder. It was well filtered. It's well defended. It's pretty much impervious to any kind of Baneling attack. And this massive oversaturated mineral line on the third is quite funny. But at this point, Kawai Rice is just in such a good spot. The income is starting to plummet now for Symbol. It's at about 600. Pop goes the fourth. And what is he left with? An oversaturated, almost mined out third, and an army which consists primarily of ultralisks and not much else. Yeah, this is not looking good at all for Symbol. And whoa, there's actually a bailing, uh, borrowed bailings on that base of Kaiwa Rice. Lol. Three bailings <laughs> right there. Um, that's funny, man. I don't even know how they managed to get there. I tell you, in Heart um, of the Swarm, that's going to be amazing. But right now, not so useful. Yeah. That's interesting, and that actually may help a little bit, but at the end of the day, let's have a look at the army supply. It's 119 to 73, and I can't even see Symbol getting higher than what he has right now. He just doesn't have money. Look at the minerals, so incredibly low. And Kara Rice is taking that 2 o'clock base with a planetary fortress, and who needs the Ghostbusters, man? Who needs them? You don't. You don't need to bring them out. Honestly, I think that they are redundant in this particular situation. Right now, we've got Symbol setting up on his fourth here, but it just seems like too little too late. And unfortunately, those borrowed banelings will probably not end up coming into play. The siege up right here from Kawai Rice is massive. 14 tanks, plus two weapon. And of course, his infantry are maxed out. And Symbol has been starved. And all Kawai Rice needs to do right now is kill oh, that man. fourth that's coming up. And that's yeah. it. He's toast. I don't know, man. It looks like Symbol has like a uh, pistol to his head right now and he's holding the trigger. And oh my god, I think it's true. Yep, he's gonna pull it. He is going to pull it. And he's running right into a siege tank oh. line, already taking significant damage. Uh, cleans up a little bit of Vanguard and takes losses that he really cannot afford. I think this is gonna happen, man. He's just gonna pull the trigger. This is a bad way to die. I mean, 
Carol Rice is forcing him, man. He's like got string on his finger on the trigger and he's pulling it. And Symbol's like, no, I don't want to kill myself. But he may actually do it. What choice does he have? You know, what choice does he have? At, at the end of the day, Kyle Rice is just going to roll out. Once he's maxed out, once he's a 200, he's going to roll all over that fourth. And Symbol's just trying to stop him from doing so. There's a nuke on the way right here from Kawhi Rice. And forward, forward goes Symbol once again taking huge shelling. Oh, man. Oh, no. I, I think that Symbol's finger, his middle finger is too weak. Maybe, no, maybe he wouldn't use his middle finger. It'd be, his index finger is too weak right now. Have you ever um, handled a gun at any point in your <laughs> life? What the hell is wrong with you? It's pulled! Oh, no! Oh, this, this is getting really messy. A huge group. And there's the EMPs. No transfuse for you, good sir. The concave from Kawai Rice is absolutely perfect. Symbol GG's and that as they say is that one apiece in this best of three series an annihilation quite frankly Kawhi Rice played that extremely well Yeah, that was good very good very use very good use of the map and Pulling it to his advantage and takes that game and it looks like we're going to game number three and oh, yeah. what map is that gonna be? <laughs> um, it Let's looks like out. it's gonna be on Taldor Malta all right, a GSL version of Taldor and Walter. I don't think it's too much different, but I, don't think so, no. I, I guess we'll have to find out. Yeah, it's basically if you want to be cool in your tournament, you pick the GSL version. You don't pick the ladder because, of course, you know, ladder is so mainstream. Let's have a look and we shall go into this one momentarily. We're going to take a very quick break for commercials as well as for me to grab a quick drink. When we come back, game three of Symbol versus Kawai Rice in the Iron Squid qualifier number one.